Hi, Bernard. Hi, Carsten. What, what are we doing now? Yeah, now we are getting our hands dirty, or you are getting your hands dirty with uh, <laughs> setting this up. And we start with the management network, but yeah. let me you know, talk you a little bit through of what we are going here and what happened. Um, so, you know, we are not starting from scratch. So you have prepared the node. That means you have installed the operating system. You did the driver inst updates. You did also a feature installation. And if you wonder uh, what that looks like, I would advise you to go to these series because we did it in the other general Azure Stack HCI installation series, right? So these steps would be the same for a stretch cluster. However, different starts at the management network, and that's what we do here in this one, right? Okay, so uh, management network, what's it for? Um, you talked about it in the general networking overview about stretch mm -hmm. cluster, so uh, maybe just a brief summary. It's for the nodes to the nodes communication, the heartbeats, it's for the nodes to the domain controller communication, DNS, name resolution, management. So if we want to do you know, uh, administration using Windows Admin Center, for example, or do remote desktop, that's the network uh, we are using. Also for the cluster going to Azure, for example, for looking up the cloud witness, um, that's also this network. Uh, and maybe you have a backup. Uh, we don't, but you may have. Um, and also this network is uh, the one that the cluster uses uh, for or will use for registration with Azure and reporting its billing use, right? The difference is we have two of those, right? So we have two sites, uh, odd and even. Uh, so we need to have two management networks um, and the cluster will finally have two IP addresses. Um, on either of the management networks, um, but uh, that's a thing when we create the cluster. So let me summarize that up or, or try to put a, some sort of graphics here uh, that you may know from the um, general networking overview uh, presentation we did for the stretch cluster. So here are our four nodes in odd and even. Um, and you can see it also by the numbering. So the last octet of the IP addresses will be, you know, in our case, starting from 51 to up to 54. Um, and that's what we are building. And we are using that last octet for a management network, um, for example, in this case, right? So that's what we are building, but we are building only, or we demonstrate only the creation of one of these networks. So please trust us, we also create in behind the curtain the other one. Um, but I don't think that watching PowerShell code twice is uh, is too funny. So that's- or four times. It's not, <laughs> it's, not, you know, it's not so funny. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do it only one, okay? Um, yes, and I think that's it, Carsten. So I'll no, hand over to- No, a small no? look at the hardware. Uh, you don't I to always, do that, right? <laughs> yeah, I always forget it, sorry. <laughs> uh, apologies for that. Um, so, when it comes to our hardware, these are the two ports which we are stitching together, right? Um, and we are stitching it together um, into a set switch, right? And we call it management. And on top of this, we are creating a virtual management or a virtual adapter, which we call management. And this is the only adapter, you know, uh, we are configuring for the management traffic. So this is the one we are using the IP addresses on to talk to the domain controller, for example. Right? Yeah, I have a, I have a question here, Bernard. That uh, I know <laughs> yeah. the answer. I know you know the answer, but I get it often now. in my courses, yes. for example. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so um, if you have Windows Server, or, or, yeah. or we did it the last years, we don't use a set switch or a Hyper-V switch to connect uh, two adapters to a virtual one. There was mm -hmm. this LBFO, the, or there is the LBFO teaming. Mm -hmm. And why don't we use that here? Yeah, uh, yeah, and the answer is, it's not supported. <laughs> and uh, yeah. the the second answer would be, I, um, 
you know, which is which is more practical. Um, I don't think that there are, that is it's being well developed, out. so uh, <laughs> well, it's finished. Yeah. <laughs> no, no more feature ads will be in there. So the strategy looks like a, going to bit into the set switch direction, right? Yeah. So I will a, add something. Uh, yeah. I will add something here. So you 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 have to be, be a bit a bit more careful than I am. I'm only a Microsoft MVP, not an employee. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure the LBFO team is feature complete. Mm -hmm. uh, is a nice wording for nobody does anything there anymore. And mm. I guess even if we found bugs, they will not uh, they will not bring patches for that. Uh, so um, in Azure Stack HI, you should or must use uh, the set switch to mm. team up uh, adapters, and it's a it's a great way to do that. We have Hyper V installed on the nodes anyway because Azure mm. Stack HI only supports Hyper-V as a work as a workload. Um, in Windows Server, I also use a set switch in my in my recent uh, deployments with Storage Basis Direct. Uh, if Hyper-V is involved, because the LBFO uh, LBFO teaming is done, and um, um, better using the new stuff that is uh, actively developed or actively uh, cared about than yep. something old stuff. Yeah. Okay, now we will switch to my screen and I will shock you with uh, more share. <laughs> so uh, we don't, I try to not go too deep into the script. First, you wonder maybe why is he showing a notepad? This is what, uh, because I'm on the console of an Azure Stack HCI node. I don't have network yet, so I can't connect to uh, the system we are RDP. I have to go via the BMC of my service, mm. or I have to wander in my IT area and use uh, really the console. And I don't want to do that with a head camera and it would be very loud. So I use the BMC mm. and I'm here logged in. And if I do a get net on a, let's do it like this. Mm. We see um, after the installation, Bernard told you already, I've done some stuff here, operating system, yada, yada, yada. Um, we have now here multiple Ethernet adapters. And you see here multiple vendors. And if you look, we have even some uh, adapters that are disabled that we don't use in this stretch cluster scenario. So they mm -hmm. are in here, but they are not used. Mm -hmm. We want to have this uh, one gigabit adapter and there's another one here uh, in our set switch. So um, where is now my notepad? There it is. So <laughs> let's open it, scroll a bit up. I have to place it a bit I'll, so you can see it. So first, this is I just uh, this is just asking me if I don't provide it for the last IP octet. So the last address. We want to use this script on every node. So. Mm -hmm. uh, it asks us what what is the IP address 51, 52, 53, 54. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I have some constants. How is the name of the switch? How is the name of the adapter? Which domain uh, name server used in the odd side and the even side? They are the same. Then I um, I extract if the node is on even or odd. I extract out of the computer name. So our hosts have to be already named. Yeah, and uh, they have in the last character, there's a one, two, three, four. Um, so I can see if it's an even character mm -hmm. or an odd character and use that to specify, is it in the even side or in the odd side? Mm -hmm. So here we have to do something that is specific to the network because the odd nodes yeah, in the odd mm -hmm. side, they have a different network than the even ones. Yeah? Here, we, here we find out, is this odd or even? And then we set the management network, the net mask, the VLAN where the network lives in, and the default mm -hmm. gateway, and also the DNS server. We do that if the node is odd, this part is used, and if it's even, this part is used. Then uh, we, uh, we want to create a set switch on two network adapters. So we have to catch them somehow, and I use the name uh, of the, in the interface description, there's the I350 in it. So I get the two adapters and have that in that array. So then I will I will clean up a bit. I will remove, if there is a VM switch, I will remove it and uh, start from scratch. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Here we create our VM switch. 
with a lot of parameters. You see here, here are our two adapters. We don't allow a management interface. We will that create manually. And there's mm -hmm. also enable SIIOV, I would say, here at the end. Mm -hmm. And we also enable uh, switch embedded teaming. We don't have to do that because if we do two adapters, it's always a set switch. It's the default, right? Uh, yeah, yes. right. And uh, if you have one adapter and uh, do the uh, new VM switch, you have to specify enable uh, switch embedded teaming if you want a set switch. Otherwise, it would do a classic switch. Mm -hmm. And the okay. classic switch has the same situation than the LBFO team. It's oh. feature complete. Okay, nothing happens mm -hmm. there anymore. So use the set switch piece. Then we add our management adapter. Yeah, we use this line for that with the specified name we have. Um, and then we configure a VLAN ID on that management adapter because in this scenario, every packet, every Ethernet packet has to, to uh, have also a VLAN ID or VLAN header uh, attached. Okay, so this is the creation of our virtual adapter of the set switch with our one adapter. But of course, now uh, it would it would get a DHCP address if we would have a DHCP server in those networks, and we don't want that. We want static IP address. We are not in Azure. We are on mm. premises here, so usually people use um, static IP addresses or do DHCP reservations. But I'm an old guy. I prefer to do static IP, and this is a part where we do that. So it's. It looks like a lot. I just, I'm just going safe. I enable DHCP. I uh, disable DHCP just to clear if there is any settings on the network card. Mm -hmm. Then I, I, uh, I put a network address on it. Here's a little bit calculation management net plus the last octet. Uh, we enable IPv6 on the adapter because every cluster that is supported has to have IPv6 enabled at least. Mm -hmm. uh, on the management adapter, and then we uh, we um, configure our DNS servers that our host can reach the Active Directory domain. They are not Active Doma uh, Active Directory domain joined yet. We will do that in later videos, but um, it has to find the stuff over the management interface. And this is something I do forever. I disable NetBIOS mm -hmm. on the management adapter. But you 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 don't must do that. You don't have to do that. I do it just uh, because I do it every any time. And then in the last step, we rename the two adapters to these names that look a little bit better than Ethernet two and Ethernet four. I like to have the names in the adapter, and that's all the magic. And now we are doing the script part by part. Yeah. So let's go here. From here where all the uh, go up, where all the variables are set. It just, it asked me for the last octet, that would be the 51. And then we have our, our variable set. And if we want to watch this, we just look for this variable. There should be the 99 in it because the node is odd. So we use the odd settings. So this part just, Fetches the adapters. Yeah, now we have our adapters. Here we remove the switch if there is any. Uh, so we don't have any any switches anymore. Let's see if there are if there is one. No, we don't have a Hyper-V switch. Then the stuff where we create the new switch, add a virtual adapter. And add a VLAN tag is this. So now, if we do the get net adapter again, we see we have our mm -hmm. V Ethernet management. That is the virtual adapter that is using the set switch. We have that. Mm -hmm. You see, the adapters are still with these Ethernet names. Yeah, we care mm -hmm. about that a little bit later. And if we could, if we look for the IP configuration. You see our adapter, there is no DHCP server, so it it has an APIPA address. And of course, we want to give it address. This is this part where we do our, all the IP configuration. So let's do that. <laughs> that was not what I wanted. 
let's do a copy here and uh, paste so it will sleep for 15 seconds yeah. it's just if you have a dhcp if you have an ip configuration you set it to dhcp uh, before you can set it back to uh, not using dhcp it needs a bit so here you saw a lot of it was going on and if i do the ip config slash all this time again you see here we have our our address we wanted we have our gateway and we have our dns servers everything is fine and the last part would be just rename the adapter this is pure cosmetic you don't have to do that but i like my adapters ah, this is when you use notepad on the console <laughs> so if we do now a get net adapter you will see here one card is named intel nick 2 and one card is intel nick 1 and of course the other adapters will also get nice names in later videos so i think this concludes our management configuration i will do that now on every host and then we do some other stuff before we see each other in the vm network video where we configure our Network for our virtual machines.